The Oklahoma City Thunder currently have the second best record in the NBA and the second best point differential in the NBA. But are they too young to win an NBA championship? Despite their regular season dominance, betting markets consider the Thunder less likely to win than the Celtics, Nuggets, Clippers, Bucks, Suns, Timberwolves, 76ers, and even the New York Knicks. This is probably because they haven't made the playoffs since 2020, and their starters have less playoff experience combined than Jason Tatum racked up in his rookie season. And yet, at the same time, 85% of teams with OKC's point differential have reached the conference finals. So, is all that youth and inexperience really insurmountable? Before we answer that, let's understand just how good OKC's been. They've gone 25 and nine in the last two months or so, defeating the Nuggets twice in Denver, the Timberwolves twice, the Clippers in a blowout, and the Celtics. In their December meeting against Minnesota, Rudy Gobert had a hard time chasing Chet Holmgren out on the perimeter. For instance, on this play, Chet just initiates the pick and roll. Rudy naturally sags under the screen. That opens the shot, but it's actually a give and go and another dunk. So the Wolves went to a zone in the second half to keep Rudy closer to the basket. But the whole problem is that Chet's a 40% three-point shooter right now. So on back-to-back -back possessions, the Thunder just went to a little flare screen. Gobert wants to stay home, and that stretches the zone too thin. In a recent video for the NBA, we talked about how OKC uses flare screens in transition to help spring Shea Gilgis Alexander in isolation. And here it is against the Timberwolves' Twin Towers, where Chet's threat to drive scrambles up the defense for a second, opening Jalen Williams, who's shooting 45% from three. And this is a really well-coached team. Josh Giddy's a weak shooter, so defenses will leave him to help on Shea, but then he just cuts into the space himself. And this works with Chet, too. He has a ton of room to attack his man here. Mike Connolly realizes that and slides down to help. So again, Giddy just back cuts him, and that's an easy pass and score. The next time they met in January, the Wolves put Gobert on Giddy so he could roam off him and clog the paint. And this downgraded OKC's shot quality because Gobert could at least help on penetrators around the hoop and sometimes take away Giddy's cuts on plays like this. Or he could bother his shot on some of those attempts around the basket. This is the theory of how teams might defend SGA and the Thunder in the postseason, shrinking the floor like we've seen in prior playoff matchups and daring Giddy to shoot a bunch of low percentage threes. But then the Thunder can swap in another 40% three-point shooter like Isaiah Joe, and suddenly an opposing center has nowhere to hide against five shooters. And you can see Avica Zubac struggling to stay with a guard deep into this possession. A minute later, Zubats is trying to avoid coming out onto Holmgren, so Paul George takes him instead, but blows a tire, and then Chet can attack and make plays himself. So there are playmakers everywhere. On this trip, they bring Zoo into pick and roll. Chet's gravity freaks out both defenders, and now it's J-Dub's turn for some no-look dime dropping. Williams is a great second star because he can initiate the offense in the half court. He can also push the pace when needed in transition and create that way. That's ridiculous. And so on one hand, he's sort of an alternate point guard when needed, but he can also just create his own offense and make difficult shots himself. Against the Knicks, he completely took over the game in the fourth quarter with his shot making. And he actually leads the Thunder in fourth quarter scoring, ranking 12th in the NBA in points per fourth on a scorching 68% true shooting. And because he's such a good outside shooter, he can play off the ball and finish what other players started, or he can just use his length and slippery penetration to attack the rim himself. He's versatile on the other end, too, because he can guard someone like Anthony Edwards in isolation. That was called a foul, but it's an incredible block for my money. And he can also guard a bigger body like Carl Anthony Towns. 
jamming up this hawk cut, then recovering back inside and helping on the roll man. And this possession basically goes nowhere because of that physicality and activity. Even though he's 22, he reads the game like a veteran, spotting this lob and getting up to steal it. And because he's so long, you'll see vertical plays like this, switching off towns onto Gobert and defending the lob like a big man. Regardless of age, these are championship level defensive plays. Michael Jordaning this block from behind before snapping off a perfect outlet to a streaking Joe. And OKC forces more turnovers than any other team in the league. So part of their success is turning defense into offense after a stop. The Thunder have the third most efficient offense in the NBA after a stop. So the outcome is a league leading 20 points per game off turnovers. And they play small around Holmgren, but they make up for it with their agility and a ton of speed. And that speed means they can get out in transition and punish slower teams like this. They also make up for that size with length. So SGA and Jalen Williams can disrupt passing lanes. And they even have an elite rim protector in Holmgren waiting at the basket. And then Chet himself is fast enough to outrun other big men down the floor in transition. Holmgren's only a 21-year-old rookie, but he already looks like a big-time player. And he plays with an awareness and command that is often reserved for older stars. Look at his patience here on this play, staying down against Kawhi Leonard only to recover and block Zubots. And on other plays, you'll see Sage-like awareness, switching onto Gobert in the post and then spotting the breakdown early to slam on the brakes and then incredible verticality to stop Ant at the rim. And if that's not enough, he hustles to the corner, but stays down on the closeout, and that is veteran-like discipline. So can talent, poise, and good coaching overcome all this youth? Last year's Nuggets were one of the youngest title winners of the three-point era, with an average age of 27 and a half on February 1st of the season. When the Warriors broke through in 2015, they were just under 27 with three starters under 25. The Thunder's average age is just over 24 with a whopping six rotation players under the age of 25. They'd likely pass the 77 Trailblazers as the youngest NBA champ in league history, back when future MVP Bill Walton led a team with five rotation guys who were also under 25. Heck, only one other team in the three-point era has even made the finals with an average age around 25, and that was way back in 1981 when the 40 and 42 Rockets defeated the 40 and 42 Kansas City Kings before losing to the Celtics in the NBA Finals. It's actually really rare for any young team to be this good in the regular season. The 2022 Memphis Grizzlies were an under-25 squad that outscored opponents by at least five points per game. And the other team to do that this century was the 2011 Thunder. And that OKC team is probably the closest comparison to this one. They had a big three that was even younger with their four top players aged 22 or below, and they made it all the way to the conference finals. In a way, this is actually good news for the Thunder because it means that so few young teams have ever been in this position, meaning even though it's rarely happened, the odds of it happening when you're this good might not be super low. OKC is currently top five in offense and defense, and they have the best point differential in the league against top 10 teams. So they certainly have the footprint of a championship level squad. And look, I'm not saying their inexperience and youth doesn't hurt them. We have no idea if defenses will chip away at Shea's effectiveness and what kind of playoff moves Mark Dagnall has in his bag. But if a really young team is going to break convention and make the finals or even win it all, this group of versatile stars that plays well beyond their years is as good of a candidate as any. 
you can check out that Shea video on the NBA YouTube channel or the NBA app. Otherwise, you can support this channel directly at patreon.com slash thinking basketball. We have a stats leaderboard that updates regularly throughout the season for teams and players, along with the Discord community and more. Let me know down below if you think we'll ever see a super young title team break through again. Otherwise, thanks as always for watching, and I hope you are having a great day.